presentation, Dr. Goodman. Get us started. Thank you. Thank you guys for having of me. Of course. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's, yeah. a, it's a real honor uh, to be here with with you and, and everybody out there. I think what you guys are doing is just amazing. Thank you. People need to know, hey, there's a lot of these procedures that are very rep intensive. So I really can't do these procedures without without y'all support Good point. and it's true yep. support. So you'll see that I'm gonna ask for support out yep. here. Does this- Let's hit one, one really important thing. So we talked about in that cascade of events, we have the degenerative disc disease, that's the D. The I is instability, right? Yeah. Let's talk about the goals portion of this. So when we teach this, we want to talk about the patients we're selecting. What is it that they want to be able to do? Do they want to be able to stand at the kitchen sink and wash their dishes? Mm -hmm. They want to be able to go climb Mount Everest or play golf, right? Exactly. So for those people that want to be active, lead active lives, the stability this provides them instead of just being a, a space holder and an extension blocker, this is actually stabilizing their spine mm -hmm. and allowing them to get back to a higher functionality. Do, would you agree with that? Not only would I agree with that, that's how you decide whether to do the procedure. If they're doing all those things anyway, yeah. and it's not really interfering with their ability to right. golf, right. they don't need this, right? right? right. It's yeah. the patient that can't do the right. things they right. want to do and right. they should be capable. Right. They have right. the potential right. of doing that. So in the past, they might've ended up in a surgeon's office, which is great. We love surgeons and we love what they do. And a lot of surgeons do this procedure and they might use it to back up like their anterior fusion or something. In many cases, a posterior fusion alone is satisfactory to stabilize that spine and allow them to get back to their function. For case in point, instead of being out for several months, they can be out for a couple of weeks and back to what they enjoy. So this is the, the undertaking of minimally invasive pain world. And it's just like we've talked about before. When you remember on your Doc Doc Live, you talked about how when cardiology kind of came into cardiothoracic exactly. and they kind of invaded their space. Now we all live homeostatically, but there's a time where we all have to figure out where we land. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's doing right for our patients. So, so the question I get a lot a lot is what's the recovery? Yeah. And and I tell folks the recovery is anywhere from one day to four weeks. Mm -hmm. So most yeah. most people are better the next day. Yep. Um, some people have some residual discomfort mm -hmm. in their back mm -hmm. um, from the procedure. Right. procedure but but yep. in general, this is, the morbidity of this yep. is incredibly minimal, yep. especially if you're going to stack it up yep. next to a a, a surgery mm -hmm. like a, mm -hmm. a T lift mm -hmm. or an X lift yep. or or an anterior posterior. Yep. This is really just, this is like a block in a way. It it, it's, it's, it's the next level yep. of a block. This yep. is an outpatient procedure. They go home the same day. Yep. Um, and it's really with minimal sedation. And, and what we're doing too, I know this has been brought up throughout the talk, but just to highlight, when you open up that central canal and you open up that foramen, you can actually take somebody that has a radiculopathy and resolve it. That's something that we really need to be cognizant of is, is that patient that has radicular pain, even with weakness, they may still be a candidate for this. If you look at this model, what you'll notice, and Dr. Goodman did an amazing job of going very anterior. Where is the strongest part of the bone, Dr. Goodman? Is it, is it the tip of the spinous process or is it right at the spinal lamina junction? Right at that junction. Yeah, so we're going in very anteriorly. I'm not aware of any spinous process fractures in nor, studies that have been nor, done, nor, nor in clinical medicine with this device because of that fact. So because we're coming in laterally, we're not putting any stress on the posterior element of the spinous process. So I, I don't think osteoporosis needs to be a rule out or contraindication. What he's asking is, as if, so maybe what he's saying is like if somebody has a high iliac crest mm -hmm. at four or five and you have to come in at an angle, how much angle can you put on that, Dr. Goodman, and still get in between the spinous process and then end up with a, a you, stable implant? You can do four five. That's why you can't really do five one, is it's, what I'd it's say. It's a more challenging. And, and yeah. the other thing is, is in the positioning, you're going to put them over a, uh, a frame, yep. and that frame is going to uh, basically uh, – take the iliac crest and move them backwards. So you can get to four or five. You may have to start a little bit more um, cephalad yeah. um, and work from, from superior to inferior, yeah. but in general, you won't run into that problem. No, and as you, as you go, you can start to drop your angle and you can end up with a, a very horizontal implant just like Dr. Goodman did here. Awesome, guys. All right, All right. Thank, thank you. Great job, appreciate, appreciate it. it.